Warm welcome from my side. Committed to sustainable mobility. Never before has climate protection been so much in focus as now, and that worldwide. Although public perception, perception has shifted somewhat as a result of the corona pandemic, this enormous challenge remains. Our goal? To design a mobility that generates considerably less CO2 in the short term, with a long-term goal of zero emissions. As a mobility provider in all vehicle segments, ZF makes a strong contribution to th this with innovative technologies. And one thing's clear, we face up to this responsibility. Corona does not change our strategy to electrify and automate next generation mo mobility. On the contrary, the crisis acts as an accelerator of transformation. The future belongs to the electric drive. At ZF, we are pushing climate-friendly driveline technology and bringing it into production. The transformation is clearly number one for us. Global legis legislation and the discussions about future CO2 targets reflect the demands of society. We're at crossroads because the demands on how the trend must change in the coming years are more than clear. The reduction of CO2 emissions is also particularly expected from the transport sector. Here, everyone must make the contribution to achieve the climate targets. This must not and will not change even after Corona. Let's look at Europe. The EU's new Green Deal increases the pressure at this point, and the targets for the transport sector will be further tightened. It is quite sure to assume that we in the automotive industry will not achieve the targets set, at least not in the coming years. And this is why the industry is threatened with fines as a further complication. As a result, our industry is losing funds especially in this critical phase, which we urgently need for the transformation process and the expansion of electromobility. The pace of change towards sustainable action must therefore accelerate even further. There is no pause, no hesitation, and no turning back. And this not only applies to Europe, but to all major markets in the world. These social trends and political decisions will have an enormous influence on the markets. By 2030, we expect that around 40% of all new vehicles worldwide will be equipped with a high voltage drive, i.e. battery electric vehicles or plug-in hybrids. And around 60% will then still be driven conventionally. But the majority will be partially electrified as so-called mild hybrids. At ZF, we already see the mild hybrid as a new normal on the way to achieving this goal. So let me tell you, this will be average, measured in terms of their product portfolios, individual vehicle manufacturers will make an even faster and more pronounced transition to high voltage drives, including some of our own large customers. The trend is clear. Electromobility is gaining momentum. And we at ZF not only want to benefit from this, no, we will continue to be the pace setter of electric electromobility. Our goal, our committed goal, is to grow faster than the market. Today, high voltage components account for 12% of our total sales of passion to car drive technology. By 2030, we want to generate more than half of our passenger car drive technology with high voltage systems. In other words, more than their global market share. We have the best prerequisites for this. 
We are already a sought-after partner when it comes to the hybridization and electrification of vehicles. And we're continuing to expand and strengthen this position. With our modular systems, we offer our customers the kind of flexibility they need in the foreseeable future and help them to further drastically reduce CO2 emissions and achieve their, supporting, their sporting goals. The orders for our next generation plug-in hybrid transmission from 2022 onwards and the next ramp-ups of our advanced electric axle drive also from 2022 onwards very clearly illustrates this. In our view, the plug-in hybrid is the technology for sustainable individual mobility alongside the battery electric drive. Instead of focusing exclusively on individual options such as fully electric cars, we believe the key lies in differentiation and the optimization of every technically feasible solution that can contribute to CO2 reduction. This includes, above all, the area of hybridization. Plug-in hybrids make a strong contribution if they are charged as often as possible and, above all, are predominantly operated purely electrically. Why? Because every gram of CO2 counts. At ZF, we therefore follow an approach that is open to new technologies and focus on the duality of solutions. Surveys have shown that around 55% of all potential buyers could imagine buying a battery electric vehicle, but not even 2% actually do so. With attractive offers that are super suitable for everyday use, we can get this customer group excited about electrified vehicles and thus help electric, electromobility achieve a decisive breakthrough. ZF will continue to invest consistently in the further development of these technologies and make a valuable contribution through its understanding of the overall system of the electric drive. From an economic perspective, the PHEV is particularly attractive for larger vehicle classes. The BEF additionally costs with sufficient battery capacity increase increases enormously here, driven by the battery costs. Especially for larger vehicles, the PF makes the most sense as a long-term transition technology. In the front transverse area, costs and climate balance speak for BEF or mild hybrids. Here we will no longer, be no longer, we will no longer develop plug-in hybrid systems from ZF point of view. Battery costs are the main driver of CO2 reduction costs. These are very important in the context of the threat of fines. Now, I do not want to anticipate this detailed chart, as you can see, because my colleague, Dr. Walliser, will explain the details to you in a moment. But let me summarize the quintessence, as it is important for the strategy for us as a supplier, for, and for us especially as ZF. In order to achieve fleet consumption targets and thus not to pay penalties, it would be cheaper for the car manufacturer to sell PHEVs. But when it comes to avoiding CO2 emissions during vehicle use, the most important factors are the efficiency of the driveline and the purely electric range. A real conflict of objectives between the smallest possible battery and the longest possible range, the challenge obviously is to find the optimum balance between the two of them. One way to solve this is to understand the needs and the behavior of the customer. The commuting distances in Germany are less than two times 25 kilometers for 75% of all commuters, which means 50 kilometers per day. 90% of all individual trips are less than 40 kilometers. 
This means that most everyday journeys can be covered with a fully electric range of a, let's say, safe 80 kilometers, which can easily be covered by a PF of the latest generation that are currently being sold. If we want to make a breakthrough in e-mobility, we must first and foremost adapt the secured all-electric range, achieve a good balance between battery size and range, and at the same time counteract the fear of being left lying down. So I believe the PF is the cleanest and most effective electric car today. As said, it has if it has sufficient electric range and is charged and used primarily as an electric vehicle. Only then will it have its effect. Of course, for us, there's no way around electric mobility, also for economic reasons. Even today, our product portfolio is only around 27% directly dependent on the internal combustion engine drivetrain. And we will co re continue to reduce this. We act as a solution provider that helps manufacturers avoid the threat of CO2 fines. This is because these are expected from 2021 onwards. In our view, it is better and more successful to invest in appropriate technologies instead of paying penalties. To this end, we ourselves are continuing to invest in electromobility and are further developing our comprehensive product and technology portfolio from a low voltage to high voltage applications. This is what distinguishes us, our broad and precisely fitting product portfolio, because the various technologies for CO2 avoidance and the different market requirements demand our focused and individual approach with the respective customer. The added value that we can offer our customers and end users today and in the foreseeable future, as well as an outlook into the more distant future, were presented by my colleagues from the technical department. So I'm very much looking forward to exchange with you and um, I'll be very much happy to answer your questions afterwards. Thank you very much.